Hello everyone, today we are going to study the software which helps to run various commands on a computer system, a laptop, a tablet or a mobile. The end user by pressing few keys or clicks can easily operate these devices. The touch screen interface available these days has further improved the ease of operation. In fact, minimal training is required for operating these devices as the user interacts with the system through a sophisticated user friendly interface. Such a software which drives the hardware device and its various components is called an operating system and comes under the category of system software. Therefore, the operating system software is the focus of today's topic. An operating system consists of all the programs that run the computer system and permits the user to use the computer. These software programs take control of the CPU or that is central processing unit immediately after the power is turned on. It performs the boot operation, facilitates easy execution of the application programs, perform internet access including file transfer, does the mail operation and various other operations. They also allow the computer system to work with a specific brand of the printer or display device and manage files on the hard disk system. Also, it is essential to protect the computer system from unauthorized access. The operating system provides a mechanism of username and password or fingerprint authentication so that only authorized users are able to use the system. This feature is essential for security reasons. In short, an operating system is a collection of programs that manage and coordinate various activities performed by the user in a computer system. It also manages the computer resources like CPU, uh, central processing unit power, memory and secondary storage devices with efficiency and reliability. It facilitates internet and other connections also. In general, operating system serves as an intermediary between user and the computer. The role of the operating system can be best understood in the following sequence of activities performed by the user for typing a page on the computer and taking printout of the same. For taking a page, the user launches a word processing application like Microsoft Word. That means the application software has to be first opened up. The operating system loads the requested program like Microsoft Word into the memory. User then types the page in the word processing program as the word processing program has features which facilitates the user to type the page. The user gives a command to print the document to the printer. Next, the operating system sends the document to the printer. The printer prints the document. In short, the operating system software supports the execution of the application programs and provides a number of services to facilitate ease of use. The functions of the operating system can be summarized as follows. First is providing user interface, providing an interface so that user can give the commands and get the desired output. Second, starting or booting the computer is also the task of operating system. Third, connecting various devices like connecting various types of printers, scanners, cameras. Uh, again, I mean this is the task of the operating system to establish the connection between the devices and operate these devices. Fourth is managing and monitoring system resources and application programs. Fifth is management of files. As all of us are aware that lot of information is stored in the inside the hard disk of a computer system. This information is organized in the form of files. The files are placed in various folders and subfolders so that you have the right classified hierarchy of information inside a hard disk. And all this comes under the file management which is done by the operating system. The sixth task performed by the operating system is security. So, 
I have explained the six different tasks performed by the operating system and as we uh, as I explained that one of the primary task of the operating system is to take input from the user as a command and convert that command into a form that the computer can understand and work accordingly. Also, it receives the hardware signals from the computer or devices and convert them into a form readable by the user. For example, the status of the printer device whether it is on off, paper or no paper or no paper jam or paper jam, printing or no printing is communicated to the computer in the form of hardware signals. The computer converts the signals into actual messages. Earlier, the interface with the computer was the text or command based which the user was expected to remember and type. These days, the interface is graphics based. The graphics based interface has drastically reduced the time required to learn a computer system. Next important task of the operating system is to start the computer. The startup process when you power on the machine, when you power on the computer, the startup process is first check the status of various hardware devices connected to the system and through testing inform if one of the device is not functioning properly or else give an ok report that all the devices are in normal condition. This operation is called power on self test in short called post. Next the computer starts the boot process. Boot process is that a part of the operating system permanently resides in the read only memory of the computer system. When the CPU is powered on and the computer starts the part of the operating system residing in the read only memory brings the remaining part of the operating system from hard disk into main memory. Once the operating system is loaded few application programs are also loaded like checking for computer viruses security programs for preventing unauthorized access and various other programs which are necessary for normal operation of the computer system these days. The third important task of the operating system is to connect devices, instruct the devices as per the command issued by the user. Also understand the hardware signals from the device and convert these signals into meaningful and understandable messages to the end user. Every device manufacturer develops a small program called device driver to facilitate the communication between CPU and the device. The device driver software is then integrated with the operating system. These devices if a new device is connected the operating system automatically installs the required device driver so that the connected hardware is ready to use. This feature of automatic installation of device driver is also called plug and play these days. The fourth important task of the operating system is to manage the execution of multiple programs by sharing multiple resources. The multiple programs under execution require CPU time, memory and access to shared hard disk. Along with the required memory allocated to every task, the operating system schedules the various programs in the order of first come first serve basis or priority order. A program may not be allowed to execute if it cannot be allocated the desired memory. The fifth important task of the operating system is to store information in various files on the hard disk and retrieve them as and when needed. The operating system also tracks the access details of various files that is who accessed the file last and when, what is the current file size now. The files in the hard disk are organized in the form of folders and subfolders within them. The files and folders are viewed in the hierarchical format. The top of the hierarchy is called a root folder. The root folder may contain files and subfolders. All the files and subfolders can be easily viewed through a file management program called Windows Explorer. 
the windows explorer can be used to open move copy rename or delete files after navigating the hierarchy of the file system also the new folders can be created by simple click of mouse buttons the sixth important task of the operating system is to protect the computer system from unauthorized access the authorized user is authenticated before allowing him or her to use the computer system the most commonly used method is username and password assigned to all authorized users the biometric authentication through fingerprint is also common these days to protect the computer system from unauthorized access over internet security features such as integrated firewall are available the firewall automatically downloads and installs security patches from the operating systems manufacturer on a regular basis in order to efficiently utilize cpu and other system resources various techniques are used by the operating system these techniques usually involve either executing multiple programs concurrently or executing one program in less time various techniques for increasing cpu utilization are multitasking multi threading multi processing parallel processing and coprocessing the multitasking refers to the ability of the operating system to work with more than one program at a time for example multitasking refers to simultaneously editing a word application program or surfing the internet for some particular information all the operating systems in operation today support multitasking a single cpu cannot execute all the programs at the same time therefore the cpu executes every program for a fixed duration of say 100 milliseconds on a round robin fashion the rotation of 100 milliseconds is so quick that it gives an impression to the user that cpu is simultaneously working on all the programs the term multitasking refers to a single user operating system multitasking with multi user operating system refers to multi programming Another technique used in the operating system these days is to use multi threading. A thread is nothing but a logical sequence of instructions required to perform a certain operation. The term multi threading refers to simultaneous execution of multiple threads at a given time. Even the programming languages also support multi threading. so that within a program you can create multiple threads and each thread can strive for the cpu so as to maximize the cpu utilization the next technique to improve the processing power is to have more than one processor system in a computer system this technique is called multi processing or parallel processing the multi processing or parallel processing involves more than one cpu Each CPU works on different jobs leading to increased performance or leading to increased throughput. Multiprocessing is supported by operating system and is popular technique for improving performance in servers and mainframe systems. Although the presence of multiple cores in a single CPU nowadays use multiprocessing on a desktop system also. Another technique to improve the CPU utilization is to use coprocessing the coprocessing is another way to improve the performance for example a mathematics coprocessor attached with the main cpu speeds up the floating point operations or a coprocessor called graphics processor is specialized for high speed computation for faster display on the display devices therefore coprocessors can be used for increasing the cpu utilization Next we discuss the difference among various types of operating system most operating systems on the desktop system use graphical user interface called gui in short the older versions of the desktop supported by the dos operating system and some versions of linux and unix operating system use a command line interface in a command line interface the user enters the commands to the computer system using the keyboard 
the command is executed if entered in the desired format along with the requisite parameter and is free from syntax and grammatical errors. Therefore, in order to make use of command line interface, it is essential for the operator or the user to remember the syntax of the command, to remember the various parameters which are required to command and then putting up all the commands and the parameters in a right syntax without any grammatical error, then only the command will work properly, otherwise the operating system will throw an error message. In contrast to a command line interface, the graphical user interface allows the user to issue commands to the computer system using icons, buttons and menu items. The selection of these objects on the screen is done using mouse or other pointing devices. The popular operating systems on the desktop system are Windows XP, Vista, Windows 7, Mac OS, Linux and Unix. The operating systems such as Windows, Mac and Linux are available on the server systems also. The server operating system is installed on the server. The personal computers are attached to the server over a network. The personal computers may also need a special client software to access the server over the network. For connecting the PC to the server, the username and password are entered by the user for authentication. Once authenticated, the server resources are granted to the client by the server operating system on a shared basis. That means, a server operating system allows the remote access or to the server through the various client devices. Next are the operating systems for mobile and handheld devices. Windows Embedded is an operating system designed for devices such as cash registers, ATM machines, thin clients and consumable electronic devices. The Windows Embedded also drives and operate these operate devices like point of sale terminals, digital cameras and DVD players. That means, the actions performed by these devices through various interface buttons are controlled by a tiny operating system called Windows Embedded. A variant of Windows Embedded operating system is Windows Automotive, which is an embedded operating system used in automobiles. The Windows Mobile is popular in mobile and other tablet devices. The Palm OS and Embedded Linux are also popular on mobile and handheld devices. These days, the Symbion and Android operating systems are most popular in smartphones and also called the leaders in the smartphone operating systems. The Symbion OS is an advanced multi-threaded multitasking operating system and provides support for internet browsing, email, handwriting recognition, process synchronization, gaming support and the common applications supported on all the mobile phones. The Symbian OS has a flexible user interface framework that enables the mobile manufacturers to develop and customize user interfaces. You may be having the 10 different type of mobile handsets, all 10 might be having different user interface, but probably may be running on the same Symbian operating system and it is possible because of the flexible user interface framework provided by the Symbian operating system, which facilitates the mobile manufacturer to give their own user interfaces, though at the core of it, you may be having the same Symbian operating system. The Android operating system is developed by Google and supported and adopted by leading smartphone manufacturers, including Samsung, LG, Sony and other major mobile manufacturers. Over and above the standard features like contacts, clock, calculator, mail, internet, display, sound and connectivity settings, there are thousands of applications developed over the Android and are increasing the popularity of this operating system day by day. In the last, we discussed the operating system used on large mainframes, high-end servers and supercomputers. The mainframes and high-end servers are known for their reliability. The operating system of a mainframe computer is free from viruses and secondary storage devices are optimized for better performance and reliability. 
The IBM mainframes are powered by the operating system like OS Oblique 390 and MVS. The Sun machines are powered by Solaris operating system. Many IBM mainframe computers use AIX that is a version of Unix developed by IBM. The world's fastest computer Blue Gene Ob Oblique L runs Linux. These operating systems on mainframe are designed for reliability and fail safe operation. That means, the uh, reliability of the mainframe is so high that hard disk once you store any information, the information on the hard disk is preserved for years on a, any mainframe system and that is possible because of the uh, various technology used by the operating system to store the information on the hard disk in a manner that it is free from any corruption. Also, it is free from any type of virus. So, in short, what we have learned today is the function and the role of operating system in the operation of any device, whether it is a desktop system or a laptop system or a mobile or a tablet or a large mainframe or a service system, it cannot run without the operating system software in between. Also, we have learned the various types of operating systems for desktop servers, what are the differences across the operating system between these different type of systems. And also, we have learned the various techniques the operating system uses for increasing the utilization of various resources like CPU and main memory. We have learned multitasking, multithreading, multiprocessing, parallel processing and coprocessing to increase the resource utilization. Thank you.